I ask you to name things which demons hate, you'd likely have no problem making a quick list. It would include the name of Jesus, the Word of God, prayer, fasting, etc. But are there things which demons love, things which attract them instead of repel them? Knowing what demons love could give you a hit list of what to avoid in your life on a practical basis. If you avoid what draws demons, you'll most likely be better able to avoid spiritual oppression, even possession. So here are 10 things that demons love when they are looking for victims. Number one, attitudinal negativity. People who seek deliverance with a pessimistic mindset often don't get free. Being a host of demons is one thing, being a victim of demons is another. Most possession occurs because of ancestral sin, no fault of the recipient of the demons. Hebrews 11.6 tells us that without faith it is impossible to please God. So an attitude of negativity is therefore pleasing and attractive to the devil. Number two, ambivalence about spiritual purpose. Demons are focused on destroying the destiny of an individual. If one is uncertain about his or her calling in life, evil spirits can more easily operate. Determination to find and fulfill one's spiritual purpose is a bulwark against demonization. Number three, lack of certitude regarding biblical doctrine. James 2.19 reminds us that demons believe in God's existence and tremble at the thought. If you aren't convinced that the Bible is God's infallible only rule of faith, it's unlikely you can be delivered. Any doubt about cardinal Christian doctrines such as the virgin birth, the atonement of the cross, and the resurrection, that will draw the attention of demons. They love it. Number four, equivocation regarding all called evil. I sometimes encounter people, even Christians, who aren't so sure that acts of the occult are doorways to demons. They argue for reading their horoscopes. They insist on doing yoga. They see no harm in consulting energy healers. Demons love such an accommodating attitude. Ambiguity about practices the Bible calls witchcraft will thwart any effort to get free. Number five. Compromise regarding habits of holiness. Holiness means many things to many people, and we're not talking about legalism. True piety. The true piety that keeps demons away is virtue based on avoiding things that dominate one's desires, time, and attention. A truly holy person won't have time for things which open the doors to the devil. Number six. Failure to overcome addictive impulses. One of the biggest open doors to demons is addiction. To be controlled by something that destroys mind and body is to open one's life to demonic intrusion. Demons love it when a person overindulges in alcohol and experiments with psychoactive substances. Number seven, religious obsession about non-essential beliefs. An overly religious outlook is just as prone to demonic possession as living like a libertine. Demons are attracted to overly spiritual people who love the weightier matters of religious law, as pointed out by Jesus in Matthew 23. Demons hate it when Christians coalesce around spiritual truth rather than argue about things of individual conviction. Demons love self-righteousness because it's an easy hiding place for the spirit of Jezebel. Number eight, bonded relationships with those opposing Christ. Demons love to see Christians hanging out regularly with the unsaved. 2 Corinthians 6.14 speaks of being unequally yoked with someone not following Christ. Such soul connections may allow an individual to pick up demons from another person. Beware spiritually bonding with someone with feet that are swift running to mischief, as Proverbs 6.18 says. Number nine, critical judgments of those in spiritual authority. 
Demons love it when Christian leaders are the object of ridicule, second-guessing, and outright subversion. The Jezebel spirit will inspire any person who makes a habit of running down pastors and those God has placed in spiritual authority. Remember, Satan is the accuser of the brethren, according to Revelation 12.10. And finally, number 10, lack of addressing generational spiritual evil. Demons jump for joy when pastors deny the reality of bloodline curses and avoid any mention that renouncing evil ancestors is necessary for effective Christian living. You want to make the devil happy? Avoid declaring curse-breaking prayers. It should be obvious that this list of ten things demons love could easily have been expanded to a hundred, even a thousand or more. Look introspectively at your own life and ask yourself, what do demons love about the way I live? Then take action to make what demons hate a regular part of your walk with the Lord. And one of the best ways to do that is enrolling in our International School of Exorcism or having a virtual encounter with me so we can Clean up your life and get rid of the things that demons love. Your financial support and prayers make it possible for us to bring hope for the hurting and freedom to those in spiritual bondage. For the latest information regarding ministry outreaches, go to boblarson.org or call 303-980-1511.